Historians refer to the period following World War II as the Long Peace because no two great powers have fought a major war. However, adversaries have increasingly turned to gray zone warfare to advance their strategic interests. Gray zone warfare entails coercive mechanisms short of military conflict, such as diplomatic pressure, sanctions that are intended to harm a target's economy, and intelligence operations that impact domestic policies or military readiness. Countries like North Korea and Iran have resorted to cyber attacks, money laundering, or state-sponsored terrorism. While non-state actors, such as Al-Qaeda and ISIS, wage gray zone warfare online and attack isolated military targets and civilian populations, the U.S. Army War College works to equip America's military and civilian leadership with the information needed to counter gray zone threats to national security. In the U.S. Army War College Press publication, A Whole of Government Approach to Gray Zone Warfare, author Elizabeth Troder makes the case for greater coordination between federal departments to secure gray zone superiority for the United States. Troder details the gray zone tactics used by our adversaries, including Russia and North Korea, and her analysis reveals a pattern of escalating gray zone warfare. For example, during the 2016 U.S. presidential election, Russian operatives engaged in active measures, including hacking the Democratic National Committee and inflaming partisan divisions on social media. Another example includes Kim Jong-il's totalitarian regime, which has sponsored criminal activities including money laundering, cyber warfare, drug trafficking, and smuggling to fund the development of nuclear weapons in North Korea. To counter such gray zone tactics, the U.S. Department of Defense must call on multiple federal agencies for support. Schroeder recommends a whole-of-government approach, led by the National Security Council, or NSC, for actions that fall within the gray zone. The NSC advises the president on national security policy and is made up of senior military and civilian leaders, such as the vice president, the secretaries of defense, state, energy, homeland security, and treasury, and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Schroeder specifically recommends that whole of government planning for the gray zone should be coordinated by the NSC's Deputies Committee, a standing NSC policy coordination committee and subcommittees for the most active adversaries. Schroeder also calls for a presidential policy directive for each gray zone attack, where the president would dictate a response, designate a federal agency to lead the effort, and establish tasks to coordinate government action. Opponents to Schroeder's plan worry the NSC may become too large and bureaucratic if these proposals are adopted. However, proponents of the plan argue a wider range of input would lead to more sound decision-making at the NSC. Would an expansion of the NSC help the United States counter gray zone tactics? Join the conversation today and read A Whole of Government Approach to Gray Zone Warfare, as well as other policy-relevant publications on the U.S. Army War College Press website. FedWriters is proud to provide technical writing and publishing support to the Strategic Studies Institute and U.S. Army War College Press. Subscribe to this channel for more updates about how FedWriters works to communicate the business of government.